This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we got us a reach-in freezer here, three-door. It's not in very good shape. It's not cooling or freezing right. Let's take a look at it. Coil is just a little bit dirty. It's running on 404. All the fans are running. Coil feels not looking top there, but the liquid doesn't feel very warm, so we're probably low on charge. Somebody peeled this out. I ain't sure what happened here, but door seals a little jacked. Fans are running, which is good. Suction line's cold, but not freezing cold. We got a EPR, CPR valve here. It, uh, you can kind of see through the coil. We're gonna go ahead and brush that thing off and then uh, let's check the suction pressure, see where we're at. I don't, this don't have a uh, receiver, unfortunately, so it's critically charged. Like, you know, six compressor. Go ahead and hook on to and see what we got. That's not good. So either we've got a defrost issue or we got a refrigerant issue. Let's go ahead and put it in defrost and see what we get. Yeah, it looks like we got some 45 minute ones. Let's see what happens here. I don't like that aluminum foil there on that. Looks like a nice place to short. Check to see if the heater elements are working. The hands all look like they're going the right direction. Some of this cleaned up. It's definitely got some issues. So that just kind of foam in there and if we have to we'll rinse it but once that foam's gone you'll be able to see through it a lot easier uh, let's check down below here see if it's starting to melt see whether these heaters are defective or it's just a charge issue what's going on it feels like it's melting wow nice Good grief. It's <sighs> ridiculous. I'm gonna see if I can open up that pack and not. My gosh. Hopefully, that makes a difference. Let's see if that makes a difference. That's gonna snap. That's nice. How are you supposed to charge it if you can't get the freaking valve open? 
These things are freaking junk. I hate these freaking valves. I've tried heating these up before. Yeah, it's gonna break. <laughs> Guarantee it. Then you have to drill it and put a tap on it. I got on there with vice grips and vice grips did not work. I clawed the piss out of it, went ahead and loosened the packing nut. That metal uh, shaft, whatever, is frozen to the other piece of metal down there. So went ahead, had to pull the refrigerant charge out, drilled it, put a quarter inch tap in there, welded it up. I don't have any of those clamp styles that do that big. Um, we scanned it for leaks in the evaporator. Nothing was found. The uh, condenser coil looks a lot better. So we're gonna recharge this back to spec and see how it performs. Coil melted out fine. Uh, it boiled off the water, but the product is uh, definitely getting warm. So we don't have a lot of time to mess around. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on it. The condenser coil though, So we're gonna weigh the refrigerant charge back in, we'll see how it acts. If it works good, we know it was low on charge and a dirty coil, and then uh, go from there. I had a little hit in the evaporator on the leak, um, but it kind of went away. It could have been from the steam, I'm not sure. Gotta re-insulate this line yet. Nice and easy to get to the 32 ounces that we need. Boom, there we go. Give it a second to equalize and let's run it. Got some replacement insulation here for our pipe there. Now it's gonna run pretty low suction thanks to that uh, EPR, CPR. But it's a simple one evaporator, one compressor. I mean, in theory, it's the evaporator pressure regulator, but it's also the CPR because it's a compressor protector, so, you know. Anyhow, let's go just to regular refrigeration monitoring. We'll watch it for a minute. You could always go ahead and check subcooling superheat for giggles. See what we get. So, so far we've got good subcooling. Superheat doesn't seem like it's accurate because that feels a lot colder than 55 degrees. But I don't know. We'll watch it for a bit. Usually they're within a degree or two of each other. Checking it right before it goes into our capillary tube. Now with this being 32 ounces, I mean, it's technically critically charged. So it's easier just to go with the weigh-in method and be done with it, which is why I didn't really worry too much about recovering it and just weigh it back in. Uh, nickel and diamond it in usually seems like it takes much longer. Subcooling is looking more respectable there. And super heat, I just, that feels a lot more colder than 50 degrees. Box is at 73. Decided to put the probes side by side to see if they were acting stupid. And so far it looks like they're pretty much right on. It's still climbing up to about, uh, they're usually within a half degree of each other. So it appears that's working like it should. We'll keep on checking our super heat here. Box is 66, pressure's dropping. So I wanted to check and see if the fan's running. No, actually they are running now, so suction pressure should come up now. Yep, my message just came on when I was in there. Suction's starting to come up, that's a good thing. Heads up there a little bit. You could only imagine what it would have been at when it was completely plugged off like it was. Especially being the shroud around the fans is non-existent. Could maybe put a piece of cardboard across the top. It would have maybe helped it out a little bit. Just putting that cardboard across there. Got right there, took it from 280, it's already dropping. That's quite a bit of air difference there. So we're gonna wire tie that thing into place. That'll help lower the head, which then will help lower our evaporator. It's gonna be a combination of multiple different things here that's gonna lead to a better working unit for sure. It's nothing more than a box of steak or something I cut into a strip and unfolded the box. So make and do with what you got. We got it strapped there on the sides and the center and also if you can see this coil I didn't scrub that at all just what I used that brush just to get the outer cover off and it did a heck of a job I've been really happy with that viper stuff it's not always perfect but um, it's done some really good work went into the defrost clock here they had it 45 minutes almost all of them 
they don't have a termination hooked up, which kind of sucks, but it's been like this for how long? So we're gonna just do two of them at 45 and two of them at half an hour. The half an hour ones are gonna be during their normal times where they're gonna be in here working. Uh, that way they don't think there's something wrong with it. So that's there at that. Just need to go back there and see what our pressures are looking at. Otherwise, we're already at 29 degrees. Things are looking good. We're gonna need to order a door seal for this thing if it's any good the track drop that head pressure almost nine pounds which is pretty good we've got eight degrees subcooling and we've got 33 degrees super heat which is pretty good normally they want at least 20 so that's looking pretty good box is at 18 degrees very so slowly dropping because the product you know warm pressures Look pretty good. Head pressures came down to 260. Suction still 17. 21 degree superheat, which is why you don't want to go too crazy when it's under a heavy load. It'll drop as it gets closer to box temperature. And uh, subcooling still respectable at around seven and a half. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I've recommended that they replace the uh, evaporator if it goes low right away anytime soon. Uh, however, the box is in poor condition and that the middle door needs at a minimum a replaced door seal. Leave it in their ballpark what they want to do next, but for right now the system's working and they'll be able to get through the weekend and move on with their day. So easy sleazy and easy to pleasey. So I am out of here guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, check us out on Instagram, and until next time we will catch you on the next one. Later.